So, guys, hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Carlos Mota, and uh, I'm going to give a talk about perception of speed and try not to fall off this stage. Um, some background, I've been developing mobile applications for the past five, six years, and on Android, on iOS, and even on Windows Phone. And there's something that is way too common uh, on both these platforms, that is, this application takes forever to load. Um, usually this happens some weeks before we decide to buy a new phone. Other times, like me, yesterday I was trying to search the best way to come to a Lex factory, and this is Google Maps, okay? Uh, I, I have a really lousy internet connection, but uh, I didn't know what the hell was happening on my device. I didn't know if the device was too slow, if for some reason I could not reach uh, Google servers, so I did what every guy usually do. It's like to start pressing uh, the search button and trying to congest even more the network. So, and thanks for this presentation, I finally could use a mem, okay? Uh, you guys have to always keep in mind that there are a billion of applications on the App Store and Google Play Store, so if your app fails at some point, uh, usually the user goes and installs another one. So when we talk about speed, uh, we can divide it in three, three areas. Okay, the first one is hardware. Um, and, okay. um, and hardware, it's really important. Um, I don't know if there is a, a whole plot behind this, but uh, usually when I have a phone, uh, after one year or two years, I start to feel it really slow. So I, did, I do what everyone does, is I start to reboot it. And then I reboot it more often. And then I start, well, I have an Android, so I start killing background applications. And uh, then a new OS appears and I think, okay, now this will fix everything. And a few weeks later, I decide to buy a new phone because this one is really, really slow. Also, of course, uh, software is really important, okay? You shouldn't do things on white thread, otherwise your application will start to lag. And finally, when everything else fails, uh, we have to, re to realize in the perception of speed. Uh, meaning that uh, there are things that we cannot control, like the network, um, like a response that takes too much time to process. So we have to elude the user that uh, this operation is taking a while, but is not aware that the time that the application is taking. So, like any good musicians, let me start with the first act, the pledge. Uh, I'm not sponsored by that new movie, no one sees. Um, so this is a brief introduction of uh, the hardware across time. So we have an amazing Dynamax 3000 that could all 30 contacts. We have Nokia 3310 uh, that had an amazing snake game. And nowadays we have mobile phones that were more powerful than my home computer uh, at the time I was in university. Uh, we then have the second act when you talk about software. And this is a really good quote by Mark Zuckerberg. Their initial application, the Facebook application, was made on HTML5. And they realized that uh, it couldn't be on HTML5. It was really slow. When you start to scroll across content, the application starts to lag. And so they decided to invest first on iOS to develop a native application. And uh, their metrics, what they realized was that uh, people usually consume two times more uh, news feeds than uh, they had with uh, HTML5. Uh, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't use HTML5 or Xamarin or other type of frameworks on this case of frameworks. But if you want to do an MVP, if you want, if you're an hackathon, you should use it, okay? It's really, really simple. But if you want to launch your product and you start to have a lot of users, you have always to develop a native. Otherwise, it's really impossible to have the same performance. And of course, Android has an amazing uh, uh, number of methods developed by hundreds of programmers and used in millions of applications, okay? Another important point here, when you talk in this case about Android, is that we have to deal with um, a lot of uh, different uh, devices. On iOS, you have to usually care about two OS versions and four devices. On Android, usually we have to care, well, we, 
last two months it was released Nougat and we still have to give support to KitKat and Jelly Bean. And we have uh, hundreds of different uh, Android devices, each one with its own customization of the, hard of the software. And uh, for instance, if you go to India, you will have devices like Johnny, Oppo, uh, those amazing devices that if you try to press back, it won't work and you don't know why. And if you have a framework that's on top of the, hard of, uh, the Android, no one will give you support with that, okay? So natively, it's way faster and it's way better to debug something. Uh, I have to say when I first starting uh, writing this talk, uh, my first thought was, okay, I have to teach those guys how they could improve their code on software, okay? Um, and then I realized an example that uh, I had or where I work at. Four years ago, I had to develop a chat application. And one of the requirements were that uh, the font, the text font of the chat balloons should be customizable. Uh, I could have Comic Sans if you want. And that at the time, with Android 1.5 and 1.6, it was impossible to do. We had to extend the methods, to cache everything to be really, really fast. And I spent probably two, three days doing that. And then I had to implement the parsing of emojis. And I realized that was a really bottleneck and it's really, really slow to do that on Android. And I had to put some all nighters for that. So I started to focus on small details. And at that time, I didn't realize that I will add another bottleneck. And there was a really waste of time from my part. I'm not saying that we shouldn't focus on that. But we always, always have to account the time that the application needs to develop. Um, saying that, that's still being used on my company today. But uh, I really waste some days that I could be improved other part of the application. So with a dark background, don't forget, um, premature optimization is the root of all evil. With this, uh, there are always good uh, programming practices that you could use. And these usually should be triggered on code reviews or when you start developing for Android for some years, we start to do things like this. The, the impact on the code is, is minimal, but uh, on times of the application, you could even uh, spare some few seconds. So you have things like if you use Java loop, it's three times faster. Or if you use floating points, it's way slower than if you use Integer, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then there is a really, really struggle. I don't know why we still have this struggle today, but usually, and I see that on my team, usually we, we, we discuss too much times between if you want to use JSON or XML, and usually there was an old guy saying that we also should use SOAP, okay? Uh, that's gibberish. Um, but there's still a, a battle between JSON and XML. And I don't know why, okay? You have, Instagram is one of the best apps when I talk about perception of speed. Those guys use JSON. And um, so I wanted to show why JSON is better. So I decided to search a bit. And the Oracle A team, those guys made several tests, okay? A team, it means that uh, they didn't care about which one would win. They just start to take metrics. So, okay, this is just a graphic to show how JSON is better. If you want, I can send you this. But uh, for you guys to know, this is a payload of 27 objects, each one of four attributes, each one with 107 objects, each one with 11 attributes. And uh, the, pay the total payload on the JSON is 26 kilobytes, and on XML is 77.3 kilobytes. And if we think that uh, many of us still use 3G to when you use our applications, when you're not at home, we're not somewhere, uh, this, this hurts our data plans, OK? So we have to focus on having the small data possible. So JSON is way better. Um, to talk a bit how we can also improve our applications. OK, I'm an Android guy. So I have to talk a bit about Android. OK, list views are, it's not deprecated, but we have list views on steroids that call recycler views that are really amazing. They have an amazing built-in library. They're backward supported to 2.1. Uh, they have a higher performance, way higher than list views. They already implement a few older pattern. It's amazing. You guys should use it. 
Otherwise, if you try to do things on UI Thread, you will end up doing something like this, okay? Android is amazing at this. It will launch an INR, activity not responding, if your application uh, is doing an operation for more than five seconds. Why, once again, it's important to, um, for your application to be fast, okay? Usually, an activity is loaded in 400 milliseconds. So if you guys are doing too many things on the UI thread, on uncreate and on resume, your, your view will start to be black or white, depending on your theme. Um, also, another important fact that we always or uh, sometimes see this on applications is the refresh rate of Android. It's 60 frames per second, meaning that every 16 milliseconds, your entire screen is redrawn. Okay, this is why you have such fluid animations. If those animations aren't being done on the UI thread, um, if those animations are being done on the UI thread and they are too heavy, what will happen is you will start to lose some frames and you will feel that lag, okay? There was some frames missing and uh, you don't know what the hell happened. And your user will feel that and you will see that uh, there are, once again, many more applications. If your user doesn't like yours, you can just go for another one. An important tip on reducing, um, uh, on reducing the time that the view takes to redrawn is to avoid the minimum of uh, overdrawn. Overdrawn is like, uh, let's imagine, you guys want to paint these walls blue, but you then feel, no, no, I like these walls to be white. So you already paint it blue, and then we'll paint it white, and uh, you'll see that you still see the blue, so we'll paint it white again, and you will do this two, three, four times until you feel that, that now that wall is really, really white. Um, this is a common example that many guys do. That is, they have an activity that is blue, they have a relative layout with a background white. Of course, if we are talking about an application, we usually have least views. Okay, this should be least, that are gray. Uh, let's imagine that each one has its own background, and then we add text, once again, it's on background, and of course, we have to have images that should be here. But this is a bit white, okay. Um, we'll have images, each one with its, own, uh, with its own image and placeholder, and then right, we'll have to redraw everything that we're doing here. And this, does, it does, this takes more than 16 milliseconds, so what you're going to feel is that you're missing some frames. And uh, this is a really bad experience. So guys, don't work when you don't need to. Don't allocate memory uh, if you can avoid it, of course. Uh, don't fetch everything, OK? Uh, and when everything else fails, well, you have these amazing profile tools that are a bit tricky to use, but are really, really, really helpful. My third act, OK, uh, it's called the prestige. And it's when things change, OK? Uh, usually when we have a problem on an application, what we do is to take metrics out of everything. We want to see how much time a response took to parse. We see how much time a query took to be, to be made on the database. And we then try to optimize that algorithm to be the best algorithm possible. Okay? And uh, we are really proud because it usually took uh, two seconds and now it's half a second. And we ship it and say, okay, this is really, really great. And then the user, if the user feels that the application took the same time because we tried to optimize only a part and we didn't realize how the application was so slow on global. So we, we should test our application from one point to the other and focus on, on what things are making the application really slow. To talk about this, uh, I have to say that performance is relative. A good example of this is um, when we are on the motorway, uh, on the highway, sorry, and we are traveling at 120 kilometers per hour, and we suddenly have to brake, if we look outside the window, uh, we seem to be traveling really, really, really slow. Almost if someone near us was walking, uh, they could be go faster than, than us, and uh, we are traveling like at 30 kilometers per hour. So, perception is really, really relative. The internet wins once went crazy about this. Um, another thing interesting here, this is a really stupid sport that Americans love, okay? You have to be on top of a ball for eight seconds. 
and if I ask you guys to count to eight seconds, probably I will have different response to what eight seconds means to each one of, of you. Uh, we can make that test. So you guys want to close your eyes for eight seconds? Starting now. And do open when you feel it's already passed. We're not closing. <laughs> okay, eight seconds just passed. And they made this test to, to different people and they realized that eight seconds is different from me to you. And th these guys, since they have to be on top of that wall for really eight seconds, uh, they were able to exactly pinpoint one eight seconds as just finished. Of course, if we want to go to Mars, two years will be a really, really long time. Although amazing, a really, really long time. Uh, there's an, another example of perception. Uh, this is called the odd ball effect. Do you guys thinking that uh, those two circles are blinking at the same uh, time? Different? Seriously? Usually when someone asks this, is because the answer is not that evident, but they're blinking at the same time. We just change uh, the background and they seem to be blinking in different times. Oops. This is a, a set of pictures. This is from where I work. I tried to pick the photo with a girl. So, um, how much time do you think that every picture was being shown? For uh, how much time? And were all the pictures shown at the same time? Uh, the picture yeah, with the same rate. Uh, usually when we see something that we like and uh, we only have, for instance, one frame, like the snowboard, it seems that that picture was shown for a longer period of time, but they are all shown by one second. But our brain really liked doing snowboards, and uh, so we t took more time to process that image, and that image took on your head a longer time. But there are, other, uh, there are other amazing things. Precession can be too fast for his, uh, sorry. There are other things uh, related with performance. Uh, this is an example, I believe it was on Philadelphia. The users always complain about uh, the time they needed to wait for their bags, okay? Usually this was a 12 minute wait. And then try to optimize the process, and that 12 minute wait starts to be a seven minute wait. But users didn't feel that anything had changed. For them, it was about uh, the same time that they needed to wait, uh, because they don't care once again if it's seven or 12 minutes. So, what they did was okay, you guys don't like this, so they put the bag baggage claim on another part of the airport, and they had to spend seven minutes to walk from one side to the other. And they were, oh, this is really, really good. You guys improved this a lot. And, and uh, during that time, people were sending messages saying that they're already here and they didn't uh, notice that the time was really flying by. And it was the same experience, the same amount of time, and they only moved this uh, a bit further. Uh, but sometimes you are going too fast. This is a really good example. Uh, when Blog, uh, Blogspot was bought by Google, uh, they moved to their servers, and uh, when people created a new blog, they usually entered a title, they decided to pick one of the themes, and they created a blog, and the blog was just displayed, okay? It was insanely fast, but users didn't believe that the blog was already created. They thought, okay, probably some bug, let me create this thing once again, and they noticed that people are creating the same blog over and over and over again, because they didn't realize that uh, the blog was already created, because they thought it was really fast. So what they did was they added a slip to the code and they put a message over there saying creating, the, uh, creating a new block. And people said, oh, wow, no. No, this is being created, okay? I had to wait for the block to, to, block to be created. So it's really difficult to, to find the exact time that people think that things needed to process. Uh, not talking about a, a bit about mobile applications, 
there is a, an amazing application that's called Instagram. Okay, they have 400 million users active. They share 80 million photos per day. And this is amazing because they, um, the Mike Krager, uh, four years ago, they created an amazing blog post about this. And people decided not to care about it. And uh, once again, Instagram was bought by Facebook. Once again, Instagram is used by millions of guys over, uh, over th every day. And we have millions of applications on the stores talking about image editing. Uh, and we still prefer Instagram to those applications. Why? Uh, you can create a small manifest for Instagram. It is perform actions optimistically, adaptive preload content, and move bits when no one's watching. And this last one is really, really, really important. So make up your applications feel lightning fast, okay? I want to like a picture, just the, you, the user double taps it, and you assume that, every, that everything works, okay? Uh, on iPhone, the, this is really easy to see because the iPhone has that spinner. On Android, you don't see anything. You assume that everything will work. The same thing for a comment. You try to comment anything, and uh, your application says, okay, this works, okay, no problem. And in case it doesn't work, that's like one in 20 times probably, just warn the user, okay, it wasn't possible to make that like, to post that comment. And usually what he'll will do is just click uh, that row once again, and uh, the request will be made again. No problem. The user can live with that with no problem. Also, load content before it's needed. Uh, for instance, if you want to open a picture, first start by loading that picture. Only then after, worry about uh, loading the number of likes, the comments, the title, whatever. Start by loading the picture. It's what the user wants to see. And, and a really amazing part, uh, okay? Do things and we'll design your application in a way that uh, you can uh, send everything for your server way before the user thinks that is being to be sent. When the user thinks that is going to be sent. For instance, Instagram already, s after you select a filter, it starts sending that image to their servers. It starts the upload process. But you don't realize that. Because you still have another screen, and you have to choose a title, and we all know that uh, title took a bit to that we think about the title, and of course we will now want to put an emoji, so we have to search for that amazing emoji, and select the location, select which networks you want to share, and uh, when you reach the last screen, usually you already have the image uploaded because you took too much time on that screen, but the user does, doesn't notice that because he noticed that when you reach this screen. The image is already uploaded, okay? So move bits when no one's watching. Um, once again, the performance is also experimental. Uh, this, is, this was a study made by Jacob Nielsen, one of the fathers of perceived performance. And uh, this was done for the web. And they said that 100 milliseconds before, less than 100 milliseconds, an action seems instantaneous. Uh, if you took less than one second, you'll see that something is wrong, but uh, you don't uh, care more about it. Uh, if you took more than 10 seconds, OK, there is a, any problem with this. But you can adapt this to mobile. Uh, if you, once again, if you took less than 60 milliseconds, it's perfect, because once again, we, every frame rate is redesigned in, in uh, 16 milliseconds. If it took less than 100 milliseconds, OK. I noticed that's something uh, problem here, but I can live with that. If you take less than one second, OK, you have to warn the user that something is being really slow. If you took more than one second, OK, forget it. The user probably is going to the, to the App Store and uh, install another application. Uh, this is an example that I did with a Moto G2, okay? I'll, I will open three different applications, and you, one of them is changed by a still image. Try to figure out which one. I'm recording my device. Okay. No application was changed by still image. 
but you see those those two applications, Google Maps and Angry Birds, took too much time to load. Okay, uh, Instagram was really really fast. Once again, it's an amazing application. No, I'm not sponsored by Instagram, but it's really really cool. Um, Google Maps took too much time open, and uh, we don't really know why. Okay, uh, because oh, nice Angry Birds loaded now. Um, because it's going to show a map, and uh, many times that you open the application, you'll still see a gray image because it's, the t it's uh, Google Maps fetching that, uh, fetch that location, fetch those images. Uh, Basic indicators, okay? Facebook uh, then does an amazing job uh, to see how their application should behave. They made an amazing A B testing that was. They sent uh, their application to some users with uh, the new spinner, okay, the one on the left, and uh, to the other part they sent with this one on the right. That feels like the native spinner. And uh, what happened was the guys on the left uh, blame Facebook saying that application was slow. The guys on the right blame their device for their applications to be slow because they thought the, the problem was on the device and not on the Facebook app. Use native spinners. Uh, there is a really tricky part uh, and really difficult part here that is when the user decides that he wants to load more content, okay? The user knows that when he pulls down, uh, it will fetch more data and uh, he knows at the exact time that he will going to wait. So with these two amazing applications, I know that it's a bit difficult to see. Uh, yeah, it's really difficult. Uh, but they have uh, really cool animations here. Uh, it's a guy swimming. Uh, you have to believe me, it's really, really cool. Um, and the other one is just like a uh, small word. And you start looking at animation and you forget the time that uh, is being spent just processing the new data. So the user this doesn't realize that he's really wasting some time looking at this animation on the screen. And he doesn't realize that the time that the application took uh, to load. Okay, but you can say for instance, when you open the app for the first time, we have to fetch a lot of data. This is an example of a news app on iOS. It is just as an amazing spinner, and the user is just looking at the spinner saying, oh, this is pretty. Um, another important uh, example is, is iMessage, okay? Uh, probably you guys all face this. Sometimes you open the phone and other guys replying and you see text and you're like waiting. Is he writing a poem? He's taking so much time, why? And then he answers with, okay. Um, I message, I message does this pretty, pretty good. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see, but this is animation, uh, three points animation, where the user is writing and you're, start, you're looking at animation and you don't see any, a static image. So, once again, the time starts to flow by without you noticing that something is happening, it's, that something is delayed. An amazing application also, it's called the Polar App. Um, these applications, uh, those guys were bought by Google, okay? They were really, really good. And this guy was Luke Warshnip, something like that. Uh, and uh, he, he tested everything on their app, okay? Polar App, it's basically, you have to select uh, from two objects, and uh, everyone will select and see who prefers a certain object. Okay, it's a really simple app. And uh, initially, they had a, simply a white screen. Okay, and what they did on one release was just to add a spinner. And the users thought, Your application is really, really slow because they added a spinner. Okay, once again, this depends from your target audience. Uh, but users complained that uh, the application took more time, even though. The only thing that was added was a spinner. So what they did, well, this screen doesn't like the grace, but uh, this is a skeleton, okay? You, you know that here it will be a, uh, an image. So what they did was they added a, a gray uh, square that the image will be loaded, and they start to fetch first the text and only after the image. So what you will see is your application to be uh, constructed step by step and you don't realize that uh, it took, once again, a while to load everything and making smaller requests, you will have that content way earlier. Uh, this is another application that is Google Hangouts, okay? 
Once again, I, I don't have any information on that screen. Okay, it's just an empty screen. I then send my application to background, and I app, uh, and I open it again, and it will lo it will show me the splash screen once again. I don't know why. Okay, they already have all the information, and once again they show that bloody splash screen. Don't do this. Okay. Um, remove network from user flow. Okay. Avoid something like this. Okay, you just you want to like an image. Okay, you don't need to waste for your like to be sent, to, for your like to be received, to your like to be processed. Processed. Okay, you can do something like this. You have a model. Okay, and you will start to have persistent data. Okay, doing this, you shouldn't forget that uh, your application needs to have the same state that is on your server. So you handle, need to handle this carefully. But uh, you can just have your information that the request was being made. Uh, locally and then deal with it when you receive the response. If the response is negative, if it fails, just show a toast, something that uh, warns the user that uh, it wasn't possible to make that request. Another, another amazing example, it's the YouTube app, okay? I really like this one. If the network is fast, it will start to play the video automatically, okay? If the network is slow, it will show you a play button over there and when you click it, so uh, t uh, there was a, a few seconds that passed that then you, well, from when you show that button, and the video will start to be buffered, okay? So when you play the, the, the video, you already have some information to show the user. Probably the video is buffered on both Yes. The first one, uh, yeah. The first one you will see that, oh no, it's really, really fast, and now you just show a button that the user has to press. This is a five minute video. We can, we can all be here. Um, there is an, another application that I really, really like. And I remember when it was first launched. I was on iOS at that time and uh, my team was just amazed by how Facebook had achieved this. Once again, the grades are not great here, but this is the paper app, okay? This was an amazing, brilliant app that deal with almost everything that uh, I've told you guys so far, and it was beautifully done, okay? You change from one place to the other, you already have the placeholder, you're just fetching your text. This is gray here, so, so when you first load the content, you start by loading the images, and only after the text. And the, you have animations in everything, and you don't realize the time that it took to just show that data. Uh, it's a really astonishing app. Okay. I'll show that video again because I really, really, oops, I really, really like it. And there's another example here. Um, when you start uh, opening this, uh, the content starts to be loading. So you'll see. Usually when you finish opening that content, you already have all the information that you need. So you start to preload things uh, way before. And when you open your application, you already have that. And it seems really, really fast. Another example is when you try to select an image, okay. If you see, ah, ah, the grades here, once again, are not great. Um, but you'll see here, it's that uh, we'll have a fade in, scale up animation, and the content seems to be immediately to be loaded, and it was still processing on the background. Another amazing app here, it's Pinterest. And they, did, they do this for some time now. The, they know where the image will be, so they have that skeleton. And they do another thing. That is, they know that the image will be black, orange, blue, and they fill that uh, space with that color. 
Google started to do this on images now. And we will have another transition that we will not notice. Um, and it seems really fast. Another cool thing here, I don't know how many of you guys use Google Plus. Anyone? Two guys, nice. Um, Google Plus, it's a really good social network. Um, but they, they really care about um, their geeks, okay? It's Google, they do what they do best, it's to have a fast application. And uh, usually when you, on, and you are on a social network and you have new information, you have some kind of view that you, toast and that you click and, and you will load more content and everything will go up. Or if, you having, if you're using 9GAG, it has the same thing. And what they did was just to change two things. They only show this toast when they've already loaded the new content instead of before. And when you reach the top, you already will have all the information. So your application usually took three seconds to do this. They started to be do done on the 0 0.35 seconds. Um, of course, that uh, these advices uh, are just examples of what you can achieve. Um, the best ways to do this is to do A-B testing with your users, to have usability tests, to see what you can improve, to receive their feedback and see what they say about your application. And you always need to keep in mind that uh, performance is ongoing, okay? Uh, you need to learn to care. You're the first user to use your application, okay? You're the first, first barrier. Uh, Google has an amazing expression that eat your own dog food. You should your, use your application daily and see the bottlenecks to see how it makes you feel, to see what you can improve. And you have to keep in mind that, once again, performance is ongoing, so you launch a version with some amazing new features, and you test all those features, and you launch again another version, and you only test those two new features, but those two new features delayed something that you've already done before, so you have to test always everything, and you should do usability tests on almost everything. So for my next and last trick, uh, don't forget, I always give instant feedback, uh, perform tasks in the background usually when no one's watching and uh, have them content, okay? It's really, really easy to do that and your performance, perceived performance, will improve. You guys have uh, any questions? Are you all still awake? Is anyone on the eight seconds? Okay, with that. Okay, my question is regarding the, the sometimes... Oh, sorry, uh, you need to have the microphone to be recorded. My bad. Yeah. Sometimes when, <laughs> sometimes when uh, implementing an application and you want to uh, add, for example, Facebook or Instagram support, uh, loading images, uh, the requests are uh, blocked for, like you make a request for Instagram and you can no, in, only make a new request like 15 minutes later. How, to, how do you um, simulate the loading uh, in that case, so you either don't have a loader or you just say, okay, this is the new content I can give you now, or how do you, do you deal with the, those cases where you can't really load new stuff? Okay, that's a really tricky question. 50 minutes, it's a really lot of time. Um, you can do several things, for instance. Uh, you could say something that uh, your content is being processed, but uh, you, when you do this, you have to say that you're waiting for Facebook, okay? You can say Prisma does it this way better now. That says that, okay, um, this server is being a bit overloaded, please wait a minute. Uh, you can do something like that. You could say something that Facebook is processing your request, and you can do something that many applications start to do now. That is, when that content is available, you just send a push notification and we'll load automatically that content and uh, or the user when he opens the app you will see that content or you just warn the user that okay there is new content here you can see it now um, and with that uh, you can reduce a bit that but the best way to do this is to implement one of these ideas and then try to see what users felt about that. Talking about that, the, there is a really good application for news that 
does something like that. That is now you have, for instance, Firebase, and you can schedule when a message is going to be sent. And um, they notice that users, users, when they wake up, the first thing that they do is to open their applications in news for that day. What they did was to schedule uh, several push notifications depending on their timestamp. For instance, they start sending push at 4 a.m. When the phones receive this push, they will load that content. And then they send to another set of users at 5 a.m. And at 5 a.m., another device will load that content. And this way, they manage to, well, to don't have an heavy, to don't have too many requests on their servers. And for the users, when they, update, when they open the app, they have updated content. Some ideas. Thank you. No problem. No? Okay. Nice.